All right. So for this section, this is when we're going to get um, down and dirty with our normal distribution and really dig deep into the z-scores, the mean, the standard deviation, what does it mean? And it's just going to get really in depth. So the first thing I would like you to do is go ahead and flip through the notes to the end of this section. And in the end of the section should lie a table and um and the table should look like this. This is a z-score table and this up here in this top right this gives you the area or and which we'll talk about in a little bit probability from the mean. So this is going to be and this is going to be this is going to be very important. So let me put from put a big note from the mean. Now, if you have taken any sort of statistics course before, you would know that, oh, but the table, there's tables that give um, area from the left or from the right or in between and all that stuff. So we are going to use this table. And the reason why is because I, in order to find the area, otherwise we would need a more robust calculator or also um, more technology. But honestly, in this class, we're just here to kind of get your feet wet, to really connect all the concepts between mean standard deviation and z-score and probability. Like we just want to put it together for you. We're not here to do really that, like really depth in depth, which is like hypothesis testing and stuff. So we can just use the table. I encourage you to use the table. Um, it's not, it gives you a reason to draw the curve and shade and really get a good understanding. Notice here on the top right corner is a Z and then you have decimals here and decimals here that are bolded. Those are the Z scores. Okay, so here is the tenths place value. And then on the top, you look for the hundreds place. Now, now you understand why I said round to two decimal places, right? Because now this is why. So if I had a Z score, let me go back to my other notes. If I had a Z score of 0.92, I would look it up like here. So 0.92. I would look up a tenths place. So let me go ahead and write that out. So 0.92, for example, here is the tenths place. Here is the hundreds place. So I'm going to look on this left column for a 0.9 and up here for a, a 0 0.02, right, for the hundreds. So let me look here is 0.9 and then 0.02 to get that hundred. So 0.9, here is zero, one, two. And therefore the area from the mean is 0.32121. So this shaded area would be 0.32121. Uh, one, two, one. So you just need to learn how to look them up. It's really easy, obviously. If we had a 0.7, like the kayaking or the bio exam, you would look up 0.7, and then there's point there's no um, hundreds place, so it would be zero column, and that area from the mean, the shaded area, would be 0.25804. These values here are areas from the mean. So it's going to be a bunch of shaded areas and it could go like from the left or even farther from the right or in between it there's so many combinations so drawing is going to be really important so it, in this we have to talk about you know um the actual curve itself so the curve has inflection points where the graph changes curvature so if we had draw the graph of the normal distribution right here is where it looks like it's going, you know, up and then go back down, right? It looks like an S. That's the change. So the area under the curve is equal to one. And that makes sense because we said 100% before, right? 
So we said 100%, and that means area, if I rewrote that as the decimal, would be 1. So that means the area to the left is a half, and the area to the right is a half, right, to go with that 50%. And it tails off on the left and right, so it never goes below the x-axis. It just keeps getting closer to it, okay? So it never, you'll never see it go under into um, the x-axis. It just stays right on top in that first quadrant. It's really nice. And of course, we always have the empirical rule. <laughs> so how do we find these areas I was talking about? Well, you definitely need a z-score. So that's always going to be your first step is to find a z-score and then shade, draw and label. I really feel like students tend to like not want to use a paper and shade. But if you could just draw even a baby one, oh my gosh, once you see the picture, you know exactly what you're going to do later. So you're going to look up um, the z-score on the z-score table. And then when you do that, that's going to be your table value. I call it table value. And then sometimes I put TV <laughs> for table value. So you still, you're going to find the z-score, go to that table, look it up no matter what. That's going to be area from your mean. From your number step two, when you draw it, you're going to be able to tell what to do with this. So if the area you're trying to find is to the left, you're going to take that whole half and subtract the table value. If it's to the right, same thing. If it's in between, you can go ahead and just add those two shaded areas from the mean. But then you're going to get something like where if it's on the left, if it's on the right side and to the left, you have, you know, 100%, you know, you're going to have to work with the areas, which we're going to do examples of each. Okay, so let's go ahead and revisit um, standard deviation and the peanut butter prices of the peanut butter jars. So we want to compute a standard we want to compute the area for a peanut butter jar costing less than three dollars. So if we just want to compute for less than three dollars, we just have to go ahead, and again, we're gonna no, we're gonna note some things up here. I'm gonna write it in a more symbolic way. So we have to find the z-score, right? So the mean is 368, and standard deviation is 0.26. So step one was to uh, once again compute the z-score. So that's what we'll do. What value are we observing? Let's just forget about what we're what sh shaded area and stuff. We'll do that next. But it seems like we want to look at the cost of three dollars, right? Um, so, so that will be our x. Okay, and then if our mean is three sixty-eight, and then our standard deviation is twenty-six cents. So this means our z-score is equal to $3 minus 368 divided by 0.26. Recall that we're going to round to two decimal places. So if I just go ahead and put this in the calculator, I'm in the numerator in parentheses, and then 0.26, I get a negative one. That's fine. Remember, negative means that it's below average, right? So negative and then round to the hundreds place. So the five is the test digit. So we have to take the one up one. So negative 2.62. And once again, I'm just going to put a note like in the back of your mind. Say, oh, it's OK that it's negative, right? Because this means that it's just below average. And remember that the bell curve is symmetric. So it's like, it's okay, it's negative, wherever positive 2.62 would be, negative 2.62 is right there on the opposite side. Okay, so that's step one. The second step is to draw the curve. So let's draw and shade. And I literally don't do much. I just draw, like, no, I don't make it large. I just make this, like, my, my bell curves get worse as we go along. <laughs> And we'll know that I put a little dash and I put the mean in the middle. So I do put 3.68 right there. And then I go ahead and put $3 somewhere. And it's, oh, $3 is over here somewhere. And I want to know less than. 
So what does less than mean? Does that mean over here where prices are bigger or our prices are smaller? Right, right to the left. So this is less than, and therefore notice the arrow going to the, pointing to the left, so we're gonna shade to the left. And I just literally draw a barrier of a solid line, and then I just shade to the left. So here is the table value. So when I start to go look, remember this is where Z is equal to zero and Z is equal to negative 2.62. So when I go and look for that table value, the table value is going to give me this area here. And therefore, I have to use some of my good arithmetic. Well, I don't want the, this green one. I need the one in the tail. Okay, well, let's use some geometric uh, geometry here, right? Remember that the half of the curve is 50%, right? Or now we know it as 0.5. All I need to do is take the table value, and if this is all one half, this whole half, and if I can subtract this table value, I will get the tail, right? That's just like area and shape and geometry, right? So again, it's like this, look at this rectangle. It's like, I want the area here, but minus this would give me the tail. So I hear I want my Z-score area, I want less than $3, which gives me the tail, but the table only gives me the value in between. So I can just take one half and subtract whatever the table value gives me, and therefore I can get the tail. So drawing is gonna be important, right? Because I get a little bit of like a, an idea of how, what I'm gonna do next. All right, so here, step three, go ahead and look up the table value. So now we're gonna go to our table value and we're gonna look up for a Z-score, negative 2.62. Now, I don't really have to care much about the negative part because it's just symmetric and the area is the area. So it's okay that it's negative, but we're just gonna look up just like 2.62. So, cause the area is just gonna be the area no matter what. So if I go over here and I go to my Z-score table, you can see here, again, it's just area from the mean and it's just area because it's symmetric. It doesn't matter if our Z-score is positive or negative. What we need is that area that we can subtract from a half. So right here, I see here, I need 2.62. Um, so I'm gonna have to go down here. Here's 2.2. So let me write it over here. So 2.62. So here is the up to the tenths place. And then here is my hundredths. So I'm gonna have 2.6 here. There it is. And then I need 0 0.02, right? 0 0.02 to match that up. So 2.6, so I guess I can zoom out a little. Here's the 0 0.02. And here's the 2.6. And that area from the mean is going to be 0 0.49560. So let me try that one more time with you. I need 2.62. So 2.6 would be the first column in the tenths place, and 0 0.02 is the hundredths, right? Two's in the hundredths. So I'm gonna just go down, here it is, 2.6. There's the area from the mean. So, so it's 0 0.49560. So take that number here as the area from the mean. So four, nine, five, sixty. So the table value is point four nine six fifty. Okay. Recall that the area um, that I am looking for is in this tail. So I'm gonna take one half minus the table value and that would give me the tail. So here I'm gonna have um, the area in this case is going to be 0.5 minus the table value. 
So we're going to have 0.5 minus 0 0.49650. And when I calculate that, I can just put it in my calculator in its area so it should always be positive. Okay, 0 0.0035. And so there is the area in that tail. And I'll just highlight it blue. So this area is 0 0.0035. Okay, so that's the process. Once you do enough of them, you get it gets really easy. But like, again, all the first step is always to grab that mean and standard deviation to get that Z score draw and shade the situation, kind of assess what you're already going to do. And then um, you're going to go ahead and just find the table value. Now, sometimes the table value is the area. It just really depends on your situation. So it's really important to draw first and then say, okay, well here, let, everything's a ha everything is going to be in terms of a half. So you're either going to add, add a half, subtract a half, subtract from a half, you know, things like that. So you just have to draw to get a good idea, visual, and then step three is just going to be the pro that process of doing it. Okay, so let's try the other two to see if we can um, just kind of repeat the process. So step one, let's go ahead and find the z-score. We notice now we're looking at a uh, area for peanut butter jar costing more than $4.25. So this means our X is going to be 425. Um, the mean is 368 and then the standard deviation is 0.26. So therefore the Z score would be now 425 minus 368 all divided by 0.26. So when you put this in your calculator, you just put parentheses 4.25 minus 3.68 divided by 26 cents right here okay and so this one's positive that it just it's a fine it just means that it's above average right and we round to two decimal places um two's the test is just a 2.19 part two is drawing and shading So we, I usually, again, it gets worse as I go. <laughs> Once again, we go ahead and put in that mean of 368 and draw and shade. So where is our, our observed value? Well, the observed value is 425. So 425 lies less than 368 or more than 368. It lies to the right of it, right? It's more than. So here's four dollars and 25 cents right? that just makes sense right left to right <laughs> prices now we say okay well if i want to look at a jar costing more than four dollars and 28 more than more than more right that means and notice here the arrows shooting to the right that means more than is like the greater prices than 425 or to the right and I usually just shade. Once again, we're looking for a tail. So this means that the table value I'm gonna get in step three is going to be this area from 368 to 425. It's not gonna give me the answer. The blue part is my answer. But we can we know better from our previous example. We know that this half is 50%, right, or a half. So all I have to do once again is take a half, subtract the table value, I get the tail. Okay, so again, the methods never change, just, just the, the data does, right? So what, here we're doing the right tail, so we take the half, the 50%, subtract that table value, and we get the tail. Okay, so um, again, the mean is where the z equals zero, and here our z is equal to positive 2.19.
So when we look at the table value, um, we're going to look up for a Z score of 2.19. And I usually put table value equals because it's just area. You could put area, but I don't like to use area because it's really not the area I'm looking for, right? It's the, um, I'm looking for the table value and then whatever area I want is I usually write in the next step. Okay, let's go ahead and go and look up 2.19. So once again, two, and I'll write it over here. So I have here 2.1 is going to be that tens place and that nine is now going to be the hundreds. So I'm going to look up 2.1 in that first column and then point right zero nine to match up that hundreds place on that top column. So let me scroll up a little. So here is 2.1 and I have zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero, 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 zero. Oh my God, it's all the way at the end. <laughs> So there is the area that's the, the from between the mean and that Z score. So once again, 2.1 is my column here going over to 0 0.09 for the hundreds place here. I get an area of 4.85. No, I'm just kidding. 0.48574. All right, let me go ahead and write that over there. Go back. is point four eight five seven four. Okay, now step four would be to find the area. So now the area is going to be equal to this one half minus the table value, which is the area f from the mean to 4.25, $4.25. All right, when I do that, I can just easily go here and put 0 0.5 minus 0 0.48574. And I get 0 0.01426. Okay, so let's try one last example with the peanut butter jars, right? In this case, notice what's happening here. We're looking for a cost, an area between three and 425. So I have two X values. I have one at $3 and my second X value is 425. And I'm looking for something in between two values. So that'll be interesting to draw. So the mean is still 368 and standard deviation is 0.26. And so therefore the Z score for each one, so Z1, and I believe we did this already. I'm gonna use our good hard work from previous problems. So the Z score for $3 was negative 2.62. And then our Z score that we just did for 425 is 2.19. All right, so the second one is to draw and shade. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? And again, I always put 368 in the middle because that's where, again, our Z score is equal to zero. And let's go ahead and mark where these are at. $3 we said was over here and 425 we said was over here. Let me go ahead and shade, and I'm looking again for between these numbers, between these two numbers. Well, look at this here. What is the table value? The table value for $3 is the area from the mean to $3. And over here we have another table value, a table value from the mean to 425. And recall that we know the Z scores, negative 2.62 over here, two, Z equals 2.19. And so notice here that we're just going to take each table value 
here and add them up. And we're not going to use the 50% anymore because the table value is the area from the mean to that one, from the mean to that one. Well, all we have to do is add those two numbers up and then we get total area, right? We get area from here plus area from here gives me the total area here. Now I have a good idea what I need to do. So let me go ahead and look up the table values. Well, for Z equal negative 2.62, the table value was equal to up here point, sorry, point 0.49650. For the Z score 2.19 is 0.48574. So in part four, when we have to find the area now, we have a good idea of how to do that. The area of the shaded region here is going to be table value one plus table value two. So just take 0 0.49650 and add 0 0.48574. And when I add these together in my calculator, 49650 plus 0.48574 is 0.98224. And you're like, that's pretty close to one. That's almost the whole the whole uh, curve, and I would say it is. It, it is almost the whole curve. You're you're absolutely right. And so, um, again, area will never exceed one. Remember, the total area is one, so it should always be be between zero and one. Okay, so these are like two situations where the z score is on the left side in this case, and you're finding area to the left. Your z score is on the right side, you're finding area to the right. Okay, and this is in between two values. Okay, but what happens if you want to find um, a, from a z score on the right side of the mean an area to the left, right? Because then you have all of this and this, right? So the, we're going to do that next of how to do with a, a special situations beyond this.